Meow. So where are we going today? We're going to Sacramento. I'm going to go look at a 2010 plane. I should say. <laughs> we're going to Sacramento. We're going to go look at a vehicle. And it's something I've been needing, wanting for the longest time. Like, this is something I've asked a lot for my friends and my girlfriend's grandpa. And it's like, I need my own. I need my own. Car prices have gone down since the pandemic. So we're back at like a reasonable level of vehicle pricing because it was just ridiculous around 2020 era of car purchasing. Like it was both good and bad. Good for the people selling their car off, bad for the people that needed to buy a car. So um, it's 2023, mid 2023. I feel like prices have come down at a reasonable level. So we're gonna go look at something. Uh, apparently Carfax says it's 1500 below market value right now. Um, it's one owner, California, it's whole life. 183,000 miles uh, rust free and it has uh, Carfax uh, service records of of the state of the same place of where it went to go get its services done so uh, hopefully it's there hopefully it works out um, are you excited I'm super excited I'm super nervous we just left the bank right now and hopefully it's not a piece of shit. Hopefully it's a nice vehicle. <laughs> All right guys, we'll see you when we get there. If it's one thing I hate about Highway 99, it's that this always happens. You always have slow traffic on the left and they're trying to pass like traffic, but that big vehicle over there, it's been trying to pass all these cars and it's like, dude, you're not overtaking them at a fast speed. <laughs> So now I'm stuck behind. And this is why I hate this highway. Like, yo, you got extra space on the left and on the right to make a third lane. But no, here we are. But anyways, um, we're about halfway there. We're about 30 minutes away. So we're already we already passed Gall. We're kind of entering um, Elk Grove. Uh, yeah. Um, hopefully, I was looking at this guy's reviews on both car gurus and on facebook marketplace he had a perfect five star score on facebook marketplace but only two of the scores out of 15 had actual comments saying that they the financing was was helpful yada 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 i could probably overtake all these cars and i probably should <laughs> we're about to pull up to the place not even a mile away Let's go. Damn, a lot of stuff they want you to put in the glove box. I don't know. Hey. It wasn't my Just put in the cigarette or whatever. Just put in the little guy in there. All right, we're looking for A and A. I believe it's called. It was after the traffic lights. I see N F Y. I don't want to get copyright infringed. Where is this place? Oh, A1 Auto Wholesale. Is it? <laughs> no, it's right there. A and A plus Auto Sales. That FJ though is calling me, but we need a pickup. So it's either this blue one right here or the green one over here. Oh, well, it's a little scratched up. Oh, it's this one. Damage right there. Oh no, the paint is peeling.
looks like it's already leaking. Remote testing that's a call Tacoma Tundra and first thing the AC does not work uh, it, I can see the compressor engage it spins but there's just no cold air coming out of the AC so it could be numerous things I did see like a wet spot on the condenser in the front so hopefully it's not a busted condenser because that's more money um, but, but being a mechanic and working at a shop I have access to AC tools to be able to fix these these items. So it's not like uh, an issue for me to fix or repair, but at the same time, yeah, it, it sucks. Um, what else? Uh, the battery tie down. Oh yeah, the battery tie down. Like the battery, they, they replaced the battery and it looks like they bought, they bought like the most cheapest generic battery out in the wild and this thing this thing the tie strap wasn't installed correctly and he was like oh it'll be fine i'm like <laughs> okay uh, it smells in here yeah it smells uh the bed the bed on that's on the passenger side and the rear uh tailgate looks like it's been uh sanded down and resprayed poorly So that's going to be a letdown. It did say on the Carfax that it was in a minor um, rear end accident. So I'm pretty sure that's where that's from. Uh, but again, the only thing, the, the major thing about this truck is California. And that's the thing, that's the issue with these Tacomas and Tundras is if it's an East Coast vehicle, it will rust. Like the rust is no bueno. So we're about to take it on the freeway. I'm about to floor it. I didn't nice. even notice right here, but the headliner is sagging. Um, you can see it above my so, head. So, let me roll up the windows here a bit. We're probably gonna die. Um, so, I did hear the hydraulic lifters um, kick up pretty bad. <laughs> I was watching the Car Care Nuts video. Shout out to the Car Care Nut, great guy. Um, I was watching his video and he says, if these Tundras stay parked for a very long time, they will make the hydraulic lifter noise because they're not being lubricated. They're staying dry. So it's kind of like the same thing like the VVTI rattle on like your typical four cylinder engines, but this is different. Um, it's not something that you would need to change because it's just, just turn on the vehicle every now and then so that it stays lubricated. That's the issue here. So that's not really like a letdown, but the guy was like thinking it was the AC compressor. He's like, oh, is that the AC compressor making that noise? And I'm kind of like, no, it's not, dude. And then he comes back and turns it on and it's it didn't come on the noise so then he comes back and turns it off and then i'm like look you see it's still making the noise even with the ac compressor off so <laughs> little funny the guy doesn't know about vehicles it looks like he's just there to sell vehicles which i don't i mean if that's his job that's his job but uh it's a really nice truck like i'm on the freeway right now i'm not I, you don't even realize you're doing 75 miles an hour it's, it's smooth like it doesn't feel bad like it would be cool for the ac was working but i mean again that's that's something i can easily fix so i kind of have the upper hand on that i could tell them like hey i could buy this as is with the ac not working and i'll take care of it and i'll knock off like fifteen hundred dollars like knock off fifteen hundred dollars from it and i'll take care of it why do you need to check to see if the radio worked don't want to get copyrighted but yeah the the radio works uh it's kind of basic in here really basic but again it's not like the trd pro models or whatever i don't know the models that well on these tundras but i feel like this is the lower the base one that just kind of has like the, the basics 
which I'm not too picky about. I, I'm not really like gonna have like a show truck. It's gonna be a work truck. So, oh crap, look at this guy. What the hell? Check, check it, take a video, take a video. Oh, it's a girl. Oh no. <laughs> Ratchet as IS-250. But yeah, uh, looks like my windows rolled down. AC doesn't work. Fucking disappointing, man. Like, you can't sell a car with no AC on the summertime. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. All right, let, let's head back. I feel like that's enough. Okay, I just want to get on the freeway, make sure, like, it's not shaking, but it does need front tires. Like, I already saw, it has some Toyos. Um, it does need front tires. The rear ones look okay for like maybe another month or so, but honestly, that's gonna be like a like a upper hand on my on my part as well because again, we have a tire machine at work. I can easily replace the tires myself. I could buy the new tires, and I could buy off-roading tires as well if I if I actually wanted to. So that's actually really cool. <laughs> Sorry, it's so hot in here. Oh uh, yeah, it's it's hot in here. Um, Cosmetically? Yeah, cosmetically it's jangling this. <laughs> uh, there's tears all along the, the back seats, the, the center right here. Not the back seats, but the back pockets. They're, they're ripped up pretty bad, but again, if I do end up buying this truck, I do want to put um, leather skins on the seats. So... I would probably do that. Not not like the put like the slip on ones, but the ones where you take off the the actual skin of the fabric and replace it with leather. Point where we're gonna head back to the dealership or the car lot, and we're gonna hopefully negotiate a little bit. So catch you guys in a bit. Oh, how did it go? Uh, it went. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it did? Okay. Um. So, yeah, I kind of showed you guys in the videos that the truck was not in the greatest shape and there was a couple things wrong with it. So I pointed out on the top of the roof or on the roof, the clear coat was already peeling. So that's not good. Uh, the, the bed of the truck on the passenger side and the actual tailgate it looked like someone started to do body work, sand it down, but didn't do a good job and they just spray painted it and it just doesn't look good. So obviously the bed had work done to it, pretty poor. Uh, the interior just had a really foul smell of pet and... Rank. It just stank rank. And... <laughs> and there was just dog hair like in the cracks of like the interior so like there was like something right here in the front it looked like a speaker maybe i don't know but along the edge nothing but hair nothing but hair so so that they didn't detail the car and then the interior the seats the the, the flip down console that that was chewed up it looked like it was chewed up by a dog uh, the back seats, the pockets for the back, for the front seats, the ones that are on the front seat, but on the back, the pockets were torn up like if a dog started to chew on them. And the, the AC just wasn't working. The compressor was turning on, but there was just no cold air coming out of the, the vents. And so that was a, it's like, how are you gonna sell a car with no AC? in the start in the beginning of summer like it's like you can't in california no you can't so that's when the guy was like oh yeah yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take care of it don't worry i'll take care of it and then the front tires they're already like at 230 seconds they're already worn out and it's like like the guy was like i'll say oh yeah, yeah yeah don't worry i'll i'll take care of that so already two things, like kind of major. And tires for a pickup are not cheap. <laughs> we actually looked some up. 
So a good set, just your basic road tire, $250 each. So I would need four. So that's about $1,000 plus tax and whatnot. So then the main issue, so every, t I don't know if it's every Tundra, but the older Tundras will have the cam tower oil leak on the engine. It just will eventually, so it's kind of like a thing like, well, it's going to happen, so you're going to need to replace it, but you're going to need to fix it. So this one already had that oil leak. So he, he, get this, so get this. So I pointed everything out. I pointed everything out to the seller except the oil leak. And that's what I told him, I'll offer you uh, 11.5 for him. And then he was like going back and forth with me, like I can't do that, it's not, like I'm gonna be losing money on it. And so then I was starting to point out, oh look at your AC, this doesn't work. Oh look at the, the, the lifters, I forgot to say. When we first started the truck, the hydraulic lifters were making so much noise, so much. The guy was like, well, well, what's that noise? What's that noise? Is it the AC compressor? And he tried to say that it was the AC compressor, but I told him, no, turn it off. You can still hear the noise. Me doing my research, I was able to find out that Tundras, if you don't run them periodically, they will have hydraulic um, lifter noise. So that was the issue. I knew what it was, but I wasn't going to tell him. So anyways, he, stuck, he was stuck at 12.5. So then I was like, look, come over here. Look at this oil leak. The cam tower oil leak was already hitting the exhaust manifold. You can see it from the wheel well. All I had to do was put my flashlight on it. And I told him, I'm sorry, but I have to stay at 11.5. This oil leak is going to cost me probably about $2,000 to get fixed. He still had the audacity to say 12.5. Who the fuck is gonna buy that with that oil leak for 12.5? No one. No one. So uh, that's when I asked him, how long has this truck been here in the lot? And he told me two to three months, which is about right, which is what the Car Guru's website said. So at this point, I was like, okay, well. We couldn't even come to an agreement, so I left, kind of in a rage, which I probably shouldn't have. Uh, I, ha I spoke to my friend and my girlfriend, and they both said, why don't you go back after we have lunch <laughs> and kind of just talk about it again, how much the DMV fees is going to be, because it had a registration from 2022, December. So we did that. I went back after lunch, we had a great barbecue, went back after lunch, and we sat down, DMV fees were about 300, and tax was like about, uh, what did we say, 19, 1800 tax? I don't know, I forgot. But the total was gonna be like 1500-ish, if I were to pay cash at 12.5, which to me didn't sound that great, with all the defects. So that was me buying it as is at 12.5. And I would fix all the issues. So then I told him, okay, how about if I finance it for 5,000 down? And that's when he said, okay, well, I can't negotiate with you on the price if you're going to finance. Okay, so I have to pay $14,000 for the truck. And he gave me the estimate and I was, I, I don't know, I just didn't like it. I ended up calling my bank to see if they could give me a, a loan. And they pretty much uh, said I had good credit. And that, fuck, what was the loan at? I forgot. 8%. But 8%. So at 8% at $10,000, 10, it would end up being like about $13,000 that I'd be paying for this $10,000 loan. So I was like, you know what, I think I could do better. I think I could find something a little bit newer. Let's try to save up a little bit more money and actually try to finance uh, 2014, which is the year where they, they did the redesign of the interior and the more aggressive front end, which is what I was trying to do with this 2010 eventually, but it, it, just, doesn't, it just doesn't seem good because I would have to buy a new condenser, compressor, 
that's already about $500. I would have to buy new tires, that's already $1,000. I would just have to buy a lot of things and it just wouldn't make sense for me to buy it. Because it gonna, it's gonna be like a $16,000 truck after doing all the repairs to it. So it just, did, it just didn't make sense, guys. So it's fine, I walked away from it. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be another pickup out there that's that's good. You know, you don't wanna be you don't wanna settle yourself with getting the first pickup that's out there. So hopefully you guys didn't get too bored. Hopefully you guys didn't snooze too much listening to my voice. And I appreciate you guys following me on this journey. Um, this isn't the only one, this is, there's gonna be more. I'll try to record more as I find more better trucks, I guess. I don't know. But in the meantime, enjoy the other videos. Thank you again, guys, for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.